Hello, my friends. My name is Joe, and today we are going to be talking about another Joe. Cujo. The story of Cujo is pretty much a pop culture reference at this point. I mean, I guarantee every one of you has heard the story about a rabid St. Bernard who goes ham on a couple of townspeople. But is Cujo really just about a dog who gets the disease that must not be named? I don't think so. Let's take a look at the source material, okay? So once again, Stephen King takes a family who is going through their own struggles and their own situations and puts them against the backdrop of some horrifying situation. In The Shining, it was the hotel, and in Cujo, it is this rabid St. Bernard. However, we do get a lot of quiet moments with this family as they're trying to navigate through infidelity and financial struggles and also living in a new town in the state of Maine. Of course, it's Maine. It's always Maine. And in these quiet moments is where Stephen King really starts to shine with his character development. Stephen King really takes the time to put you down on the ground with his characters, not just in these horrible, terrifying moments, but also in the really quiet moments, the everyday type of things. We follow Tad and Donna as they're going to the grocery store. We follow Vic as he's trying to figure out a way to maintain his relationship with his client and his business and different things like that. And I think that this is one of the reasons why Stephen King's writing doesn't work for everyone. The man likes to meander. His characters don't exist solely for the plot to happen to them. The plot happens because we're following these very specific characters during the course of their day-to-day -day lives. Now within this, um, there are certain parts of this meandering that I found more interesting than others. For instance, Donna's arc throughout this story was really interesting to me. She's going through this kind of transitional phase, obviously, because they've moved to this small town in Maine, and she's got this young son, and her husband works a lot. So she's really struggling to find a sort of purpose, because her son is getting to the point where he's getting ready to go to school. Her husband is obviously distracted with work. She's in a new town. She's really isolated in this town, because she doesn't want to let go of her youth. And she's still a young person, but she has this grip on her life when she was in college or when she was a teenager. She felt more attractive, more youthful. She had more energy. She felt like she had something to to give to the world around her. But with her son getting older and her husband's job getting a little bit more serious, she's finding herself isolated and without purpose. And I found that to be a really interesting thing that we explored throughout the, the course of this book. Vic, of course, he is dealing with trying to maintain a relationship with this really important client. He runs like this advertising, marketing company sort of situation with his one of his best friends. And unfortunately, they are having a little bit of issue keeping the business afloat. So we have a lot of scenes where Vic is going through the different ads that they've run for this company or how to make this ad better or having conversations, business conversations with his friend. So those are the kind of things that happen in Vic's corner of the world that I didn't really find as interesting. But the stuff with Donna was very intriguing for me. Now, of course, with a book about a rabid dog, we have to address the elephant in the room and that elephant just happens to be a 200 pound rabid St. Bernard. Nobody warned me that this book was going to be sad. Of course, when you go into a book about a rabid dog. There's only one way that the book is going to end for that dog. But I was not expecting Cujo to be an actual character that we follow throughout the course of the book. We follow him before he gets rabies, we follow him as he is infected with rabies, and we follow him as he slowly starts to lose his himself and Unfortunately, we also follow him as he has completely lost his mind and he is going ham on some townspeople. Nobody warned me that Cujo was not going to be a mindless beast on the page. I was expecting this to be a monster, like an actual monster, but I felt like Stephen King, he didn't really humanize Cujo. I mean, his being inside Cujo's mind, you can definitely tell it is, it's not a human mind. Um, he leads with his senses and things like that, but he definitely made you sympathize with this poor, poor dog dog who, who just wanted to be a good boy. He just wanted to be a good fella and he was a good fella and everybody loved Cujo. I mean, even the, the town drunk who hates everybody keeps a couple of dog biscuits in his pocket just in case Cujo might happen to lumber on into his yard. I mean, Cujo was such a good boy and he was struck with the hand of fate, okay? That hand of fate being rabies. That being said, the dog 
is scary. Okay, imagine a 200 pound St. Bernard coming at you full force in 100% animalistic rabies rage. It is horrifying. It's horrifying. I have a 100 pound dog of the Heinz 57 variety and I cannot imagine him coming at me in 100% animal rabies rage, let alone a dog that's twice his size. I cannot imagine. And if it ever did happen, I would probably poo poo in my britches. There is death in this book and Stephen King does not pull the punches on the deaths that happen. The ending of this book is probably one of the greatest of Stephen King's endings that I have read thus far. Now, I have not even made a, a dent in his bibliography, whatever you want to call it, his, his backlist books. I have not made a dent. But this ending of the ones that I've read packs the biggest punch. It was emotional. It was shocking. It was, I, I couldn't predict anything that was going to happen. And we got to a point in this book where I just could not put it down. I had to find out what was going to happen. And I finished this at work in the office. I had to go to the bathroom to compose myself, okay? I had to see the conclusion of this story and what a conclusion it was. The only real drawback with this book for me was the instances of Vic and his advertisement company, which I didn't really care about, but the stuff with Donna and Tad, the situation with the rabid dog, all of the different things going on, I really, really, really enjoyed those portions of the book. So overall, would I recommend it? 100%. If you wanna read Cujo, you should read it. So that was my review for Cujo by Stephen King. Cujo review by Joe by Stephen King. Uh, let me know down below if you've read this book. Let me know your thoughts. What Stephen King book should I pick up next? I don't know. Like, are you watching this video and you're like, oh my God, Joe should read this book. You should let me know. But I hope you guys enjoyed this video. And if you did, please make sure to join the Not So Average Joe Army. We would love to have you here. I hope you have a fantastic rest of your day and I will see you next time.